Hi everyone and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions. My name is Tommy. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 69. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're a new viewer, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, a big welcome back. Today's a rainy Wednesday in February here on the Northern California coast where I'm coming to you from. We have a Ravelry group for this podcast. That is where you'll find show notes for this episode and all previous episodes. Knit along stuff, giveaway stuff, some other fun stuff too can all be found in the Ravelry group. So if you haven't checked that out yet, please do so. That would be lovely. And what next? I don't have any admin, so <laughs> I will get right into what I'm wearing because I am wearing one of my hand knit sweaters. And this is the Like a Cloud Cardigan by Hohi Locatelli, who is quite possibly my very favorite sweater designer. She is very prolific. She designs a lot of sweaters. She's got a lot of designs. A lot of them are sweaters. And if you watch her YouTube channel, which is called Hohi's Journal, she always shows what she's working on design-wise. And man... She comes out with a lot of patterns, and so many of them are very cool. This one is the Like a Cloud, and it's knit with two lace weight yarns held together. I didn't use anything close to what she called for in the pattern. She called for, I think, um, a silk mohair blend and like an alpaca blend, maybe? I'm not sure. But I used... Um, a 100% superwash merino lace weight yarn, which was Madeline Tosh lace something. Uh, it's the plied one, not the single ply. And that was in the Gossamer colorway. That's a gray yarn. And then I also, I held it together with Rowan Fine lace in like a dusty pink colorway, which created this really amazing Mar I shouldn't show you that part because that's where I ran out of yarn and used a different color. <laughs> what should I show you? Here's my shoulder. I really like the color that I got holding the dusty pink together with the gray. Um, and the Rowan Fine Lace is, I believe, an alpaca merino, but I could have that wrong. I forgot. I don't know. And that's because that's what I had in my stash, and you know me, I love a good stash scrounging project, even though I ran out of yarn. It's okay. I use something different for the rest. And I really like this cardigan. It's got these drop shoulders. I think that's what they are. It's open front, so there are no button bands at all. There's no finishing on the front part. It's just a raw edge. I really like it. This is a great sweater. So, that's what I'm wearing. Have you knit one of these? What did you think of it? I remember when this came out, she kind of, I think she kind of created like a buzz around it before actually releasing it. And so I think a lot of people were excited when this pattern came out. And I was one of those people and I bought it the within 10 seconds of her putting it on Instagram that she released it. I went and bought it. And then I cast it on. Same day. Then it took me forever to knit, I think, because it's an all-over knit pearl texture pattern. And that is um, less fun than stockinette for this girl. Okay, moving on from what I'm wearing into my first finished object. Um, this week on the podcast, I have got a couple different crafts, and I'm pretty excited about it. My first thing is a knitted finished object. I finished my DK Brioche a Bandana Cowl. This is a pattern by Lavania Petrocella, and I knit it in some hand spun, held together with some O wool. I really like it. Here's what it looks like on. Ta-da! Isn't it cool? I love it. Um, so it comes down to this point in the front meant to emulate wearing a bandana. And it's brioche. It's two color brioche. And I think it fits 
so amazingly cool. The idea of a bandana cowl has been around for a long time as far as I can remember. Um, there are some pretty old patterns on Ravelry for bandana cowls and I remember a long time ago when I first started seeing these, I did not like them. I thought they looked stupid. Sorry, I hope that's not mean, but that's what I thought. <laughs> um, and I just, I remember feeling that way. And so when I saw this pattern, for some reason, now, all of a sudden, I was just like, that looks really great. And I want to knit it, so I did. And my mind has totally changed. I do not think it's stupid anymore. I think this is wonderful. <laughs> and um, I don't know, I just, I love the way it fits. I love that you can wear it over an open or a closed coat um, or under an open or a closed coat and it kind of without a lot of the bulk of a shawl it covers the chest area and I think that's really great I think it's gonna be really warm and this is what it looks like from the back is that even a thing should I show you this I don't know I'm doing it that's what it looks like from the back and what I like about it too is that it's really tall so when I'm out walking in the cold, and it's really, really cold, I can put it up like this. And it'll do that. Keep my face warm. Okay, so. As I said before, this is a two color brioche pattern. And I think knitting brioche, especially two color brioche, especially in the round, is so much fun. It's just, it's, it's one of those um, hand motions, those repetitive hand motions, like in knitting, that just like gives me this like click of satisfaction in my head as I'm doing it. And I love it. It's so much fun. So the yarns that I used, um, this main color on the outside is handspun. And then the secondary color, which if you flip it onto the inside, it's reversible. This one is the O wool. And my leftovers are here. This is the O wool. It's O wash worsted. And it's in the Appalachian stone colorway. So it's like a blue gray. And then the hand spun that I used is this Into the World hand spun. It is Shetland wool in the Andrasti colorway. And these are really pretty far out of my normal color wheelhouse, but I really like how it came out. I think the coloring looks pretty good with my complexion and my hair color. It's just not what I normally gravitate towards. It's not what I typically like. Um, I am a pinkish kind of gal. <laughs> and, um, but I'm really happy with it. So the shape of the thing is this bandana-y shape. It's got that in the back and pretty much what you do is it's top down and you knit in the round until you get to here and then you just start knitting back and forth with decreases and it's super simple uh, me with brioche though one of the things i dislike about brioche is increasing increasing and decreasing and that's just because they are two stitches that in the past i've never been able to wrap my brain around to the point where i had them memorized so I always had to look them up before I did them uh, so I was kind of dreading getting to this working flat part but um, I ended up memorizing them really easily this time don't know what happened maybe it's because I've done it before but knitting flat with the decreases they were all decreases no increases um, it was like super simple so I was really happy about that I did mess up quite a bit at the beginning but I don't really care she the the way she splits this part it is not complicated at all but it's really elegant in my opinion how it kind of comes out of a single stitch um, as you can see though I did kind of mess it up in some spots here-ish but 
I really don't care. And the way that Two Color Brioche looks on the edge when knit flat, when you don't mess it up, <laughs> I think is also really elegant. Um, it almost looks layered or sandwiched, and I think that's really cool. So my two yarns were pretty much worsted weight, and this pattern, the Brioche Bandana Cal, comes in separate patterns for different weights of yarn. So I could have chose, I chose from the DK version versus the Erin version, which is called the worsted version, but the yarn she uses in the samples and Erin weight. And this worsted, I thought if it was gonna verge on the DK side or the Erin side, it verged more on the DK side. So I chose the DK weight pattern. Um, the only difference I'm guessing in the patterns are the needle size and stitch counts. And bearing all that in mind, I chose the DK version. And I'm really happy with it. I could definitely see myself making more of these as gifts. I think this would be a really nice gift for a non-knitter especially. So I'm definitely gonna keep this in mind for gift knits. Not that I do gift knits like ever, but you never know, I might. <laughs> I might give a gift of a knitted cowl at some point. Um, I have plenty of leftover yarn, so I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It'll go in my scrap stash and probably sit there forever. I super dug this pattern. It was really nice to get back into brioche for a little while. And I like it. I like it. It's nice. Okay, that is my only FO. And... I will show you now what I've been working on. I have a new cast on. I dyed a couple new colorways for Moonstone Dye Works, and one of them I decided to cake up and cast on a pair of socks for my trip this weekend to Stitches West, which I will talk a little bit more about later. Um, I wanted to knit a pair of socks during my trip, and I haven't decided quite yet but I think I might do after every after thought everything socks um, because that way I can knit a very long tube cuff to cuff and not have to worry about heels or toes or trying them on or placement or sizing or anything. I'll knit one long tube from most of the cake and then go back later and cut it in half. Each half will be a sock and then I'll add the heels and toes afterwards. So that's my idea. I don't know if I'll actually do it yet. If I change my mind, I might just do a regular afterthought sock, one at a time. <laughs> or I might um, just do a regular sock. I don't know. We're going to have to see. But so far I have a cuff. And the yarn, this is one of my new colorways for Moonstone Dye Works. It is called Aquarian. And this is my BFL sock base. I really like this colorway. It is, it's a tonal, but it's got speckles in it. It's got kind of sea greens and blues and kind of seaweed greens and teals. I like it. So, here are my socks so far. I've got a cuff. And I cast on 64 stitches on a size zero needle. I'm doing a two by two ribbed cuff and I'm actually about one row into the stockinette leg right now. I have recently decided to experiment with switching up my sock recipe. I before used to do 56 stitches on a size US one needle and now I'm deciding to try 64 stitches on a US size zero needle, hoping for a denser fabric that fits a little better. And I think it's coming along pretty good. I like how my socks with that formula are fitting so far. I have not finished a pair yet with that formula. The other socks that I've got going on, which I haven't worked on these past couple weeks, are my Cat Sandwich Fiber socks. and. I've got one finished sock and it fits pretty good. So we'll see. So that's all I've got. This is what I'm gonna be knitting on if you see me at Stitches West. And I'm excited about it. 
I don't have any socks this color and I thought about this color peeking out of these black ankle high boots that I have and I thought it would look really good. So these don't have a project bag yet but they will get a really good project bag because I'm gonna need something to tote this around the marketplace this weekend. So that's my first whip and it's wonderful. Okay. My next whip is my Guthrie. And it is living in my fat squirrel project bag. My Guthrie, well the Guthrie is a pattern by Caitlin Hunter. It's a pullover pattern. I am going to steak it and make it a cardigan because I saw her do that with the version of Guthrie on her Instagram feed and I was instantly attracted to it. So I decided to knit it, make it a cardigan like she did. And I'm using Lotu Lopi, which is this amazing yarn that comes in these plates. And it is an unplied, actually it's unspun wool. I am on my second plate of the black and my still my first plate of the pink. And I am pretty dang far on this sweater. You ready for it? I'm done with the body. Ah. And I am working on the first sleeve. So I extended the pattern. Here it is, circular yoke. There's my steak panel. I added five extra stitches in the front for that steak panel. And I followed the pattern exactly all the way to here. And in the pattern, she's got four rows of these. In my mind, these are rewind and fast forward buttons. <laughs> so four rows of these rewind and fast forward buttons. And I added three more rows because I wanted to add length to the thing. Cause I like a longer thing than what she called for. Um, the sweater itself is pretty short in the torso and I just don't like sweaters to be that short. I like longer sweaters. So I added a little bit of length. She calls for this like cabled ribbing, I think, but I just did a regular two by two rib for the hem. Cause I don't much care for fancy ribbings. I like straight up two by two ribbing in my stuff. So that's what I did. And it was really, really satisfying to cast the body off. So satisfying. And now I'm on the sleeve. I'm not too far into the sleeve. So this is where, right here, is where the sleeve was put on hold. And so this bit of color work here is so far all I've done on the sleeve. I ordered some special needles for these sleeves. I ordered some 12 inch circulars and they are 12 inch Licka needles. I am knitting this sweater on a size US 5. Now I ordered 12 inch circular needles thinking that it would make the sleeves nicer to knit on than knitting them on Magic Loop. I don't know though. I don't know if I like it. it it's getting annoying. These sleeves are annoying. So far, all I've done is that much. I'm super annoyed. <laughs> I don't wanna work on it anymore. I'm over it, I'm done. I do not wanna make these sleeves. I'm not one to feel stranded on Sleeve Island, but I'm there now. I'm usually pretty fine with sleeves, but not this time. I am not too keen on knitting these sleeves. And I don't know if it's necessarily the needle's fault, the yarn's fault, or the fact that I'm just knitting sleeves in color work in an all over color work pattern, which is something I haven't done before. It's probably a combination of all those things, but I'm not feeling it. I can't wait to be done. I think I might actually try Magic Loop. I think that might make it go a little smoother for me. So a lot of people love these 12 inch circulars for sleeves. And this is my first time trying it. What I don't like about it for this particular sweater 
is that with Magic Loop, I'm working two halves, right? So it feels like I'm working flat. Or, yeah, it feels like I'm working flat. I got this row of stitches. I turn it around. I, I work the next row of stitches, and then I've got one round. With this, I feel like I'm working a few stitches at a time. It's like four stitches, I have to do this. Four stitches, I have to do this. Four stitches, I have to do this. At least with the magic loop, I'm working half the stitches and then I turn the thing. And then I work half the stitches and then I turn the thing. I feel like I'm turning my sweater a lot more with these. And I think that's just, I think that's because of the needles. I think that's because maybe because it's color work on the, I don't really know. I don't know. I'm just not feeling these sleeves. <laughs> so I think I might try to switch to Magic Loop, see if that makes it go any smoother. But I really can't wait for this thing to be done because I really want to steak it. I really want to wear it. I just have to push through these dang sleeves. And because of those sleeves, I've kind of put this thing down for a little while because I got just straight up sick of it. But um, once I build my resolve back up and pick it up again, I just, I think I just got to do it. I just got to buckle down, do these sleeves, and then I can get to the fun steaking part. I'm really excited about cutting open my knitting. And then I can wear this sucker. I have tried it on and it does fit with, it has no ease. And I'm thinking this will change once I actually have sleeves and especially once it's a cardigan. But as of right now, when I try it on, the neckline is really high. Now, I don't know if it's like supposed to be like that. I think it is like that in like the pattern pictures. I'm not really sure. It looks like a normal neckline in the pattern pictures. But when I put this thing on, it's like the neck is almost like a funnel neck. Like it it sits really loose around my neck, but really high on my neck. So I don't quite know what's up with that. I don't have much experience doing color work yoked top down sweaters, but she does have short rows in the back to raise the back higher than the front. Um, but that's how it came out. We'll see how it ends up once it's all finished. Um, yeah, it did feel a little weird when I tried it on, but it's not done, so, you know. But I do quite love it. I think aesthetically it's amazing. I love this really rustic wool with these really pokey kind of wool hairs sticking out of it <laughs> in these really flamboyant colors. I just love it. I love it so much. And I think I'm going to feel pretty dang cool walking around in this thing. So I'm excited to be so far on this sweater. And I hope that I can get farther. Because I just want to wear it. And that's it for that. Now, after getting sick of that sweater, I decided to pick up my other sweater that I've been working on that I put down for a long time to focus on that sweater. And this in my Gussler Designs yarn chicken bag is my Marled Mania cardigan. This one is so much more fun to work on. This is a sweater pattern by Stephen West. It is another open front, mostly all over garter. What am I looking for here? What am I doing? Open front, mostly all over garter, cardigan pattern, and it calls for marling your yarns together in his kind of signature style. You hold two fingering weight yarns together-ish. You can use other weights too here and there for a more textured effect. And I'm using a bunch of scraps and I am in love with it. So that's the back. That's where I'm at so far. 
These are the sleeve holes up here. Under each sleeve is this panel of ribbing. And on each front is this panel of bigger ribbing. This front panel is going to be the final front panel. So with this sweater, there is no going back and picking up for um, ribbing or button band or anything like that. It's all incorporated into the pattern. So you're just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you're done. It's really fun. It really is a simple, short pattern. There's not a lot of construction elements, instructions to have to follow. So it makes it really simple, really easy. I, can, I feel like I can really focus on what yarns and what colors I'm using rather than focusing on um, following instructions pretty much. And it's really fun. I like it so much. I um, got this big bag of scraps and mini skeins that I'm putting into this. The yarns that I'm currently knitting on right now are these two. And this is a skein of Hannah Made It yarns. And this is in the Springtime in Gothville colorway and it's on her single ply base. And this is Moonstone Dye Works in the Stone Cold Manners colorway on, I think this is the, this is the BFL nylon, BFL sock base. So right now I'm holding these two together and I really like how the colors are working up in this thing. I feel like I started with some kind of grays and neons and then it goes into a lighter kind of pink overtones with this stripe of neon green. And then what I'm working on now is kind of going into my darker colored yarns. And so I think that's gonna be pretty neat. I think it's gonna look really, really good. And I'm going to show you what it looks like on so far. This is one of those cardigans that it's really easy to try on as you go. So, Here's what it looks like so far. And as you can see, it's got this huge open front. I don't know what the style is sweater is called, but the collar comes way down like this and it's gonna be mostly straight down. So I am altering this pattern. When you're knitting it in the pattern, it calls for you to do a bunch of decreases and it supposed to, the body of the thing is supposed to kind of come down like this, like an upside down triangle, so that the bottom hem is, has much, has very many, has a lot less stitches on it than it does towards the top. I didn't necessarily want it exactly like that, so I'm still decreasing, but I'm decreasing at a slower rate, so I'm gonna end up with more stitches at the bottom hem. And I'm even considering doing it more like way shaping, or at a certain point, I start increasing again. I'm not sure yet though, we'll see. So I really like how it's coming out. We'll be doing the sleeves last, of course, and this would actually look pretty cool as a vest too though. Anyhow, I'm digging it. I love it. I love, love patterns where I get to use up my scraps because I have this thing where I like using up every single little tiny bit of my yarn. I don't know, it's a satisfaction thing. I hate having yarn left over. So any project where I can use a bunch of my scraps and that's like the main body of the project, I love that. I just think it's wonderful. So that is it for all my knitting. I do have one more work in progress and it is a weaving. What? I am working on my very first weaving right now. And I'm so excited about it. I have been wanting to weave for so long and I haven't done it because for one, it's just a new thing and it's hard to just jump into something that's totally brand new. And 
there's a lot of different types of looms. A lot of different types of weaving. And I just was never sure what to do. Big A big part of it is that I didn't want to buy equipment. So I've always been attracted to the kind of less expensive way to get into weaving, which is like these like frame looms where you can make like wall hangings and stuff, as opposed to what I think is called, what I, I think it's called a rigid heddle loom, where it's like a bigger piece of equipment where you can make scarves and shawls and stuff. And then beyond that, there's like floor looms, which are, you know, like huge table size pieces of equipment um, where you can make like blankets and stuff. There's lots of different types of looms. And weaving is one of those things where I was intimidated by it because I really felt like I wanted to do types of weaving where I needed equipment, either purchased equipment or equipment that I built. I've had this plan in my head that I've wanted to build a frame loom for a long time. And in my head, it looks like a frame, a wooden frame with little nails in it or little notches in it. And I just never got around to doing it, didn't want to buy one, so I've never woven. But I was inspired by Kalisha of the Quirky Monday Craft Cast. She did a round weaving, which is something I've never really thought about. She did it on a... She did it on an embroidery hoop, which was just so inspiring to me because I have embroidery hoops and I can totally do that. And so she did this round weaving on an embroidery hoop and she cut it off and mounted it on a metal ring. And she did it in this beautiful gradient of like white to yellow. And she pretty much, it was like her son weaving. It, it, it replicated the sun and it, just everything about this piece that she made was so inspiring to me and it, it just made it click to me that I can do it with the materials that I have already and so I did it. Um, I am working on this weaving right here. So there's the actual little woven part that I have so far and then the rest of this is all going to become more of this. So I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I pretty much saw hers and heard what she had to say about it on her last podcast, which is the Quirky Monday Craftcast, which is a podcast you should definitely check out if you haven't. It's really, really good. And she kind of described how she did it, and I just went based off of that. <laughs> and I do have embroidery hoops, but I do also have this metal ring that I purchased back when I was doing that crochet mandala, which I still have not finished, but I do want to someday. These things, as it turned out, were not cheap. I bought them on Amazon. They might be cheaper at some place like um, Michael's or something like that. But if I remember correctly, these hoops were like somewhere between five and $10 each, which to me felt really expensive, <laughs> but um, I don't know. And I had this one and I thought it would be cool to do my weaving right on it and then mount it or not remount it, but actually use this as the wall hanging frame. So I used the metal hoop instead of the embroidery hoop. I think an embroidery hoop would have been much easier because this was a little bit of a pain in the butt. So pretty much what I did is I took this, I think this is called crochet cotton. And I have a big spool of this that I bought from Knit Picks a very long time ago. And the only color I have is this yellow. So I took this and I just wrapped it around this hoop. I tied one end right here, just right on the hoop. And then I took a single strand and all I did was I wrapped it around like that. Like, did that make sense? I don't know. I took it and I wrapped it around like that. And then I wrapped it around again, just like, just like this, all the way around the thing. And I didn't really count or measure. I just kind of did it however it felt right. And once I had a whole bunch of wraps, it was a super huge mess in the middle. It was a huge 
mess in the middle. They didn't all cross like in the same point, they crossed all over the place. So what I did was I took another, oh, well, when I finished, I also, I finished back up at the same point and just tied it back on, tied the end back onto the beginning of the string. And then I took a separate piece of cotton, two separate pieces, and I gathered a bunch of the middle together and I just put some yarn string in like this and just tied it shut so that it brought all of the middle pieces together. <laughs> I did it super sloppy and slapdash, pretty much. Now, the issue, which isn't, I don't care, I really don't care, but what I'm noticing is that about half of these strands, I think this is called the warp, my yellow cotton is the warp, half of them are tight, half of them are loose. So these ones and these ones are pretty snug, these ones and these ones are pretty loose. So you can see these are just kind of like, they'll just like all fall down like that. So I constantly have to kind of keep moving them around a little bit. I think they're gonna get more stable as it gets bigger. Um, so I don't think it's that big of a deal. I've been noticing that like right there and right there, it's a little loose and then over here it's a little tight. But this is an experiment. We're gonna see how it goes. I don't know how it's gonna go when it gets bigger, if it's gonna, have spots that are looser than others, we'll see. Let me show you what yarn I'm using and then I will continue to talk completely willy-nilly about how I did this because... So I'm using this hand spun yarn. This is the very first like full on indie dyed braid of hand spun that I ever spun. So when I bought my spinning wheel I have a Shocked Ladybug. I bought it from Spunky Eclectic Online. They are a dyer. They're a dye company. And their fiber is absolutely wonderful. If you are a spinner and are looking for a hand-dyed fiber source that carries really great breeds of fibers, check out Spunky Eclectic. I love them. So I bought my wheel from them and they sent me for free with my wheel two braids of this fiber. And I was super blown away when they did that. I thought it was amazing. And um, so this is some really old hand spun. It is Finn, which is a wool breed. And it's in the colorway Aquarium. And it's a two ply and I have two skeins of it because there were two braids. I have a feeling this is not gonna take up that much yarn. Um, so what I did is I, because, okay, so when you're weaving, you have to take your yarn and weave it under and over and under and over all of these warp threads. So I can't use like the whole cake, right? So I had to wind off a little bit. So I just wound off a little bit and I've been just using this little ball and kind of going in, see. <laughs> Am I gonna mess this up trying to show you? I've just been taking this ball and going under, over, under, over, under, over, all of these things. Um, there might be an easier way to do it, I don't know. I know there's something called a shuttle, and I feel like the shuttle is like a wooden thing that you put your yarn on and you can use that as a tool to go over, under, over, under. But this is working good. So I'm super excited about it. I plan to use this as a wall hanging and I think the hand spun is working up really cool. And I'm just super excited about it. I've always wanted to weave and this was a really easy introductory way I feel like to do it. It did not take much skill or knowledge or equipment, and I'm just super into that. To be able to just kind of start and wing it. And um, Kalisha of the Quirky Monday Craft Cast, who inspired this project, uh, made sure to mention that it is going to be perfect for her make-along that she's hosting right now. So right now she's hosting a Pisces season make-along where you can make anything that has to do with Pisces. 
which is the astrological sign that her birthday is in. So happy birthday, Kalisha. Um, and so anything that has to do with Pisces, be it in color, blues, greens, fish related, ocean related, sea life related. And she pointed out to me that these colors are, would be perfect for her make along. And I am so excited. So I'm entering this in the Pisces season make along. And you know what's funny is my, my socks, my new colorway, which is called Aquarian. Did I say that before? This is the Aquarian colorway. <laughs> this, my hand spun, is the Aquarium colorway. What is up with me right now? Don't usually do this. But um, so both of these qualify for the Pisces season make along. And I named Aquari Inns after the sign Aquarius, which uh, its season just ended. So anyway, I feel like I explained how I did this really poorly. If you are interested though, and have any questions, feel free to message me if you need any help. I don't know what I'm doing, so keep that in mind, but I can tell you what I did in a more clear way, perhaps. Um, or just watch the last couple episodes of the Quirky Monday Craft Cast, because she talks about what she did, and I just copied her. <laughs> um, I'm really excited about this. I think it's gonna be so cool. I love woven wall hangings. I've always wanted to make one. And I think this might kick me in the butt a little to do a more rectangular one like I've always wanted to do and maybe make that loom or maybe even just like do cardboard. Like you can cut out a piece of cardboard, right? Put little notches in it and do your warp on it and that's it. Bing, bang, boom. Got a woven wall hanging. I don't know. Um, also, I remember that Caitlin of the Wool Jewel podcast a while ago talked about doing a cardboard box loom project. I think she referenced an Etsy seller that sold like instructions, like a little instruction book on how to make a loom out of a cardboard box. I can't remember. Maybe I'll look into that too. Anyway, I feel like there are a lot of different ways to weave without equipment. And I think that's really cool. And I think I'm gonna look more into it. So that's my weaving. I'm stoked. I think that's like a 14 inch hoop. I don't know. But I'm just gonna leave my weaving in it and then hang it straight on the wall. I don't know where. My hallway in my house, like my main hallway, is painted like this really bright tangerine orange color. So I think that might look really good on that wall. And that's it. That is all my crafting for this week. I will move on now to shop update. If you have not yet checked out my new website for Moonstone Dye Works, it is at moonstonedyeworks.com and there's a link in the description box below. Please do check it out. I am really proud of it and really excited about it. Uh, the shop can be directly found on the website now rather than on Etsy where it used to be. And I have dyed up two new colorways that I will show you now. I also wanna let you know there is a discount code that I've created for 10% off your order in the shop, it's a one-time use discount code. And if you're a subscriber of the mailing list for Moonstone Dye Works, that is how you will get that coupon code. So if you're interested, there's a bunch of stuff in the shop right now, including what I'm about to show you. Um, all you gotta do is sign up for the mailing list on the website and you will receive that discount code. This is my new yarn that I've dyed up these past couple weeks. I have got Hydra. And Hydra is a constellation. It is a big giant serpentine monster constellation. And that's what I've named this colorway after. I feel like it is a very serpentine kind of colorway with the greens and the purples and the yellows and the blacks. And I really like it. So I've got this on a few different bases. This one is Stellina Sock. This one is Merino Single. I have also got my other new colorway, which you've seen already. It is Aquarian. 
and this is merino decay this is merino single and same for this one i've got it on like four ish three or four different bases and i really like those colorways so that's it for that let's move on to favorites i have got one thing to talk about i did uh, make a purchase that i want to share with you and it is a tarot deck. So I was watching the Chevy Rills stuff podcast. She, Chevas, did a special episode about tarot, kind of like an intro to tarot kind of episode where she kind of explains how a deck works and all kinds of stuff. It's a really cool episode. If you're interested in tarot at all, I really recommend you check it out. And I watched it and it got me really inspired to buy a tarot deck. I have one deck. And it's, it's a kawaii deck, and it's very simple. The artwork on it is very simple, and it's okay, but I'm not that drawn to it. I wanted something with a little, with the artwork, with the artwork that's a little more in-depth, a little more involved, a little more detailed. And there are a couple things that I really like about tarot. Um, I'm not necessarily that into tarot, honestly, and I I'm not into it in like a spiritual way at all, but I do love the artwork. Um, I love that there's different tarot decks that have each card has like a theme or a meaning or like a traditional set of things that are involved in the artwork. I like that there's different sets that take that theme and express it in their own way artistically. I think that's really neat. And I really, really like cards. Um, I'm very into card games. I'm very into shuffling cards. I spent a lot of my youth learning how to shuffle cards really cool. <laughs> it was very important to me learn, to learn that shuffle where you like, you shuffle and then you flip them up so that they form an arch. I learned how to do that when I was really young. And I was very proud of myself. And I love doing it still. Also, I can I can sit there, just like knitting, I can sit there and spend like five minutes just shuffling cards and just be happy. Anyway, I very much like cards. I very much like the idea of an artist's interpretation of the different cards on those cards. And uh, I really like what I consider to be the randomness of tarot cards and having a card that has like a meaning or a story being randomly drawn and you being able to or me being able to use that random framework as a way to view whatever i feel like it kind of gives you a different perspective it's like a prompt i think that's how i view tarot is like it's a random prompt to use to look at something like your day or whatever. I think it's really cool and I think it's really fun. And there's this tarot deck that I've been looking at for a long time and it was pretty expensive so I never bought it. But I got all inspired by Chevis's video so I bought it. And it's this. So this is 78 tarot and it's the astral deck. Now what 78 tarot is, it's an artist collective where they get 78 different artists and assign each artist a card. And they're responsible for creating the artwork on that card and then they put out a deck. And they have several different ones. The one that I got is Astral. They also have a nautical themed one, a circus themed one, and then another one without a theme where the artist was just given free reign to create whatever they wanted. And of course, I buy a tarot deck and it is tarot in space. Now the artist that I originally um, knew that was a part of this deck, I saw it, I, saw, I found this deck through her. She said that she was creating a card for this deck and it introduced me to it and this is the card. So this card was created by Leilani Joy, who's an artist that I've talked about a lot on the podcast. I really, really like her artwork. She always has a female subject and 
I just love her style. She created a card for this deck. It's what introduced me to it. And I just really loved it. And so I got it. And it's really super cool. Um, I've been looking through this deck and finding a lot of colorway inspirations for Moonstone Dioricks. For example, I pulled this card the other day. I love it so much. Isn't that amazing? And I mean, the thing that I love about this is the artwork. It's just, it's beautiful. And every card is in a different style because every card is done by a different artist. And it's all astral themed. So there's space stuff, there's alien stuff, <laughs> there's like astronauts, the cosmos, stars. Here's like a falcon out in space. It's just really neat. I love the artwork in here. Oh, I'm gonna show you one more. Cause it's a cat, a cat in space, right? So that's what I got. <laughs> I've been having a lot of fun with it. Um, I've been pulling just like one card a day to look at and read about and admire the artwork of. And I really like it. Another cool thing about this deck is that it comes with a little book that has a write up for each card. Now, the first half of the write-up is what the artist has to say about their experience making the art for this card. And the second half is written by one person who writes for every card in the deck. She gives a little paragraph about what she sees in the card visually, the card that the artist has created, and then she gives a little write-up about like what this card means when you draw it in your drawing whatever it's called. So I think it's really fun and I'm really happy about it and I've been having a lot of fun with it. And if you're interested in tarot or and or this kind of artwork, I guess, <laughs> um, check it out. Their website has all their decks and you can pretty much look at all the artwork that's in all the decks. And I think it's pretty cool. So that is my recent acquisition. And that is it. I will be heading to Stitches West in Santa Clara, California this Friday. I will be there staying in an Airbnb by myself on a Friday night, Saturday night, and then I'm gonna come back home on Sunday. And I'm super excited. I am going to Stitches West pretty much just to go to the marketplace and hang out and knit and spend all day wandering around and having fun. I haven't decided yet if I'm gonna go to the pajama party on Friday night. There's a pajama party in the hotel where the convention center is at like 10 p.m. And I want to I want to think that I'll go but honestly I don't know. I don't usually stay up past 10 so <laughs> I could be totally wrecked by that point. We're gonna have to see how I feel. Um, also I'd have to like drive to it because I'm not staying in the hotel so I don't know, we'll see. But if you're going and we see each other at the marketplace, I do hope we can stop and chat for a little while. And I am just so excited to go and hang out and see people and chat and look at yarn. I can't wait. Um, so I'll be leaving on Friday. I'll be spending, I think it takes like six hours to get there. For me, it takes some people less time to get there, but it takes me about six hours to get there. Uh, maybe even a little more. I'm currently reading a book called Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. And um, I got a version of that book on audiobook so that I could start listening to it. So I'll be listening to that on the way down. And um, I've also got some podcasts loaded and some music loaded, so that'll be a good drive, I hope. I won't get to knit, which is my favorite part about driving, but it's okay. So that's it. I will leave you guys there. I hope that you guys are having a fantastic February, and 
If you like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't yet. Join the Ravelry group. And I will see you guys next time. Have fun and stay awesome. Bye.